Hello again, YouTube. Kenny here. Uh, so, for many of you that know, uh, the Fall of Theramore scenario was released yesterday, and uh, which was a surprise to me because the guildie popped up and said, "Hey, the scenario's up." I'm like, "What?" Like, yeah, yeah, it was released this afternoon. I was like, "Holy crap!" And I thought to myself, "I'm like, wow, I've got a few friends that's expecting it tomorrow, and they're at work right now." And uh, the girlfriend was pretty disappointed because she wanted to do it as well, but she had a lot going on. So anyway, uh, after playing it about nine, ten times with two different guilds, uh, I did it on all my characters, and um, I gotta say, the overall effect of it was, in a word, underwhelming. You expected more, but at the same time, it, it kind of met some expectations. Uh, I expected more of a scenario in the beginning, instead of just some goblins on a ship dropping the mana bomb, because I actually read the novel. I'm one of those nerds. I read the novels and more. And, uh, Again, I expected a little bit more because, I mean, in the novel, it's this huge battle, you know, a lot of stuff going on. But I will say this much, Jaina is turning into kind of a badass when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to her dialogue in the game. Uh, obviously, Theramore has thrown her over the edge. She's gone neutral. She doesn't, she's not as soft as she used to be. And, uh, you know, Garage is becoming power hungry and uh, trying to claim Kalindor from his own and, uh... Uh, now, the story in the novel gets into this Blackrock orc that has actually come into the service of Garage, and he's having an effect on him. I, I don't know how this is going to influence him overall, but obviously we know, for anybody that reads uh, the notes for any future patches from Blizzard, uh, they know that Garage is going to be a future raid boss. Uh, apparently, from my understanding, the Horde and the Alliance kind of collaborate together to take down Garage and take back Orkhamar uh, at some point. So it's going to be a huge raid. But other than that, scenarios overall are a good touch, uh, I think. And the, the really cool thing I like about them is that you don't have set roles. Uh, now, what, one thing I did notice in doing the Fall of Theramore, and obviously it's early for scenarios, so I'll hopefully tweak this later on, but um, is that it actually helped if we did have a healer because some people were potentially undergeared uh, these scenarios do have a minimum gear uh, eye level that you need to even queue for them. But I, when I went on my priest and I was healing and damaging at the same time, as well as my paladin, uh, I went in with full PvP gear on. Uh, judge me if you want to. But uh, it really did help to have a healer because you do die a few times. You can become overwhelmed, uh, especially with the elites running around. So you do have to take your time or you will die. But the good thing is, is that the res points are actually in the queue instance, so you're not having to run back from a graveyard uh, outside of the instance. So you're just making your way back to your body within the instance. So that's a very cool touch, and kudos Blizzard on that. This week I did want to mention one person. Uh, it's a person I recently subscribed to their blog, and uh, just recently subscribed to their YouTube channel. But they're doing a lot of good work with their blog, and uh, I think it's... I think it's really cool, uh, and I'll provide a link to the blog and the YouTube channel. Now, I'm going to refer to this person as a her, because her wild character is a her, a female night elf. But uh, her name is Envy, and uh, it's EnvyTheInsane.com, and that's N-V-E-N-V-I-I. -I. Uh, she plays on Asjel Narub, Narub and uh, her guild is Wolfpack. But uh, she's doing a lot of good work with her blog. She's going through, she talks about the insane title, uh, grinding Hydroxium, Hydroxium Waterlord Rep, uh, and uh, Thunder Seekers, different legendary stuff like that. But uh, she's doing a lot of good work with her guides, and I wanted to thank her because she's putting a lot of time into it. And it's going really, really well. So uh, I did want to mention that, kind of link back to her blog and uh, her vlog. Uh, be sure to check her out. She's got some She's got some guides, uh, video guides, as well as uh, written guides in her blog. So the girlfriend and I were having a discussion the other night and kind of got into a nerd part of it uh, when it comes to DC Comics, uh, specifically Batman. Now, she, the argument is, is that he's not a superhero because he doesn't have superpowers, that he's kind of a kind of a wannabe. Now, nobody said he was a wannabe, but... Uh, I would like other people's intake on what it is. Do you think that Batman is a superhero or a non-superhero? Just a regular hero? Personally, to me, 
looking at the lore and looking at his background and the villains he's taken down, the number of people he's saved, the number of other superheroes he's saved, not including Superman, uh, he's a superhero to me. He's done enough to have claimed that title. And that's, you know, that's just to me. Now, I, I am a DC nerd. I like DC more than Marvel. Hang me if you want to. But uh, he's, a, he's a superhero in my eyes, you know? I mean, uh, he's been through a lot. His character has. Uh, he's had so many reincarnations that obviously he strikes a chord with people. And I, I, he, he, is, he is my genuine superhero, even more so than Superman. The, the, you know, the most super you can get in the DC universe. So that's my two cents, and I'm wondering what y'all's are. Uh, so let me know. Be sure to comment if you want a video response. That's cool, too. Well, that'll do it for this video, and uh, be sure to subscribe and comment. And I hope everybody has a great day, and I will see you next time. <laughs>